The human rights arm of the United Nations has pronounced that it is stunned and dismayed over the mass execution of 38 presumed ISIS contenders in southern Iraq a week ago. Iraq's Equity Service said the greater part of the executed activists were individuals from ISIS and their allure alternatives were depleted. Under Iraqi law, being discovered liable of being an individual from the psychological oppressor Agriga conveys a sentence of life detainment or passing. The mass hanging was requested by the Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi not as much as seven days after Iraq broadcasted triumph in the war against ISIS. WSWS.org reports, this is the second mass hanging to be done by the Iraqi administration in under three months. On September 25, 42 individuals were executed at a similar jail. We are profoundly stunned and shocked at the mass execution on Thursday. UN Human Rights Office Representative Liz Thrassel told journalists in Geneva. Given the defects of the Iraqi equity framework, it shows up to a great degree far-fetched that strict due process and reasonable trial ensures were followed in these 38 cases, the UN representative included. This raises the possibility of irreversible premature deliveries of equity and infringement of the privilege to life. Reprieve International issued an announcement denouncing the mass hanging. Capital punishment ought not be utilized as a part of any conditions and particularly in Iraq, where the legislature has a disgraceful record of killing individuals after profoundly uncalled for trials and much of the time in the wake of being tormented to admit. Among those executed in the most recent mass hanging was a man in his 60s, who has been in Iraqi correctional facilities since 2010 as a presumed al-Qaeda part, and a denounced ISIS part who held double Swedish Iraqi citizenship. Sweden dissented the execution, summoning the Iraqi minister to hold up its challenge. There are an obscure number of other outside nationals in Iraqi correctional facilities as speculated ISIS contenders. One of those detained is a 17-year-old German young lady who was caught after government powers overran the ISIS-controlled fortification of Mosul not long ago. She had come to Iraq at 15 years old subsequent to being reached over the Internet by an individual from ISIS promising marriage. Head Administrator Alabadi said as of late that she also could confront capital punishment. Human Rights Watch has assessed that somewhere in the range of 20,000 people are presently detained as speculated ISIS individuals in Iraq. As a rule, they have been cleared up by U.S. upheld Iraqi security powers and unified civilian armies which have treated each battling age male in regions that were under ISIS control as suspects. Iraqi equity is neglecting to recognize the culpability of specialists who secured lives under ISIS manage and those in charge of violations against humankind, said Sarah Leah Whitson, HRW's Middle East executive. Iraqi equity in dread cases depends on an arrangement of drumhead courts which convict respondents in substantial part in light of admissions extricated through torment. Detainees are routinely subjected to beatings with metal bars and links, suspension in push positions and electric stuns, alongside taunt executions and dangerous of assault of female relatives. The individuals who are given synopsis trials on psychological warfare charges are, in their larger part, sentenced for completing any solid fear-based oppressor activity, but instead only based on doubt of participation in the restricted gatherings. The counter-fear laws have been utilized to stifle restriction to the administration in Baghdad, especially with respect to the nation's Sunni minority, which had challenged ponderous government constraint before ISIS set up its control over a substantial swathe of Iraqi region. While the UN has challenged the mass executions, the truth of the matter is that delegates of the real colonialist powers have all communicated their help for the additional legal murdering of every one of those associated with having a place with ISIS. U.S. Defense Secretary James Distraught Dog Mattis over and over portrayed the U.S. system in Iraq and Syria as one of destruction, while Washington's agent to the alleged against ISIS coalition, Brett McGurk, announced that the U.S. mission is to ensure any outside warrior who is here who joined ISIS from a remote nation and came into Syria, they will bite the dust here in Syria. This same arrangement was reverberated by the British government, whose worldwide advancement Sir Rory Stewart expressed in October concerning volunteers to ISIS from the UK that they had repudiated faithfulness towards the British government and lamentably the main method for managing them will be, 
in relatively every case, to slaughter them. Thus, French clergymen of the military, Florence Parley pronounced, if the jihadists die in this battle, I would state that is generally advantageous. This approach has been loyally actualized by the Iraqi administration in its progressive U.S.-supported attacks of ISIS-held urban communities including Tikrit, Fallujah and Mosul in which the discount devastation of urban zones and mass passings of regular citizens under U.S. bombs and shells were trailed by rundown torment and executions of guys gathered together in the fallout of the fights. While the arrangement of obliteration articulated by Washington has been acknowledged in the mass executing of regular people, as far as ISIS itself, its application has been exceedingly particular. In the attack of the Syrian capital of ISIS, Raqqa, U.S. authorities directed the mass departure of somewhere in the range of 4,000 ISIS contenders to eastern Diyaritsa region in October. As opposed to murdering them, they were transported out in a four-mile-long guard together with their weapons, ammo and explosives keeping in mind the end goal to turn them against Syrian government powers endeavoring to recover control of the fringe with Iraq and Diyaritsar's oil fields.